presences or something, but we've run into some very nasty spirits before. And, mm. and I will tell you, as a medium, it's not human spirit. I've never really interacted with a, a, a deceased loved one that has been aggressive. I've definitely had spirits that have said, I'm not pleased with a situation or I'm not happy about a situation or they were a tortured person, but they're not causing cancer in children. Do you know what I mean? Like right. that kind of thing. And I have been in homes where there has been an entity of some sort that has caused illnesses uh, in family members and that sort of thing, mm -hmm. which I... That's horrifying. Absolutely. I, I actually have video of crucifixes falling off of walls onto babies' beds. and I mean, like, really scary stuff. And wow. I'm not usually... I'm the first person to be a skeptic. I went into this home and I was... This is the only time it's ever happened to me, too. So I'm not saying this is a regular occurrence. I went into that home and I was like, I don't even want to be here. I, yeah. this, this is a really negative space. And it took us a good three weeks of going over periodically and doing various things to get this energy out of the house. And I don't know what it was, but I can tell you, I don't think it's a deceased loved one. I don't think it's it's a spirit that is, you know, remaining here. It's something else. Did yeah. they have a Ouija board under the couch or anything? Uh, no, the, the family was actually very, very, very much so anti having even witches come in, but they were at their wits end. They had mm -hmm. several mm -hmm. priests from the Archdiocese of Boston go in and try to cleanse the home. And almost like Amityville Horror, mm -hmm. they started getting infested with flies um, oh and like everywhere. Yeah. And the, all this stuff was happening. The, there was a daughter, and, and I'm not using names, so I don't feel bad about talking about this, but a daughter that was having horrible brain issues. Mm -hmm. And it didn't start until all of this started to occur in the home. And she's she had several CAT scans, several things that had gone on, and they found a giant tumor. And then there was oh, blood, God. I mean, constant blood, no, uh, bloody noses. And when she, she came to me, I was like, this woman is having some type of mental breakdown. But then I actually went in the home and I, I saw it firsthand and I was like, this is just not a good place. Wow. So they had lived in the house before that and all was well. And then just one day, somehow this, this evilness came into their house. And Absolutely. But I will say this. It all started to occur when they added an addition onto the home. So it may be, and it may be something to do with the land spirits. It may some uh, some connection to the land itself was not happy, but it took three of us going in there regularly to even feel comfortable going into the home. I have the worst goosebumps right now. Yeah, and I like actually I actually too. like feel like nauseous. Yeah, yeah it's like spooky. Yeah. Oh yeah, look, you're getting a little teary over there too. I know. I get yeah. nervous about this. Stuff. Yeah. So I'm not going to put an addition on my house now. No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any, like, kind of explanation for people who are very worried about negative spirits coming into their space? Like, how does it happen? Why does it happen? Okay. Coming into the space or, like, somebody moving into a new space? Both. Both? Either. I would say moving into a new space is probably a pretty common occurrence uh, okay. for spirit activity in my, in my experience. And the things that I tell people to do is very old world. It's going to sound very folksy, but I will tell you I've had great experience with it and, and great uh, success with it. I tell people on a regular basis, if you feel like you're moving into a new apartment, a new home, and there's some type of spirit energy in there, all you need to do is create a plate of food, leave it out with them while you're dining, tell the spirit, eat and please go. And I know that sounds very folksy, but it works. Oh, that's interesting. You, you wanna, that's so interesting. Because everybody approaches like, I got to get rid of this spirit. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why not just talk to the spirit and say, we respect that this was pla this was your place at one point, but it's ours now. And, and we want to have the wonderful experience that we need to have here that you must have had, which is why you're tied here. And if you give them that information, most of the time, whatever's there will, will leave. Now, if you're going in and there's something that just won't leave, what I recommend is is a basic cleansing um, and then also warding. Everybody talks about cleansing a home. Mm -hmm. Nobody talks about what do you do after you cleanse a home because essentially what you're doing when you cleanse is wiping a chalkboard clear, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That leaves it wide open for more things to be written on that chalkboard. You're, you're, you're cleansing oh. this space away. You're, you're, you're saying, this is empty now. Something needs to fill it. So what I tell people to do is to ward their home. I am a firm believer of iron being a very protective element. It's, it represents Mars planetary-wise, and Mars is the planet of strength and protection and aggression and war. So I tell people, hang iron cross nails. Go to a hardware store and get iron nails. Tie them together into the shape of a cross. Place them above your doors. Iron protects your, your home. Also, 
take olive oil, make the sign of the cross or a pentagram or a star of David or whatever your your religious symbol is, because mm-hmm. that symbol has power to you. Olive oil, not I don't know if a lot of people know this, but olive oil and olive trees or, or bushes are planted around vineyards in Italy because pests won't attach themselves mm-hmm. to olives, right? Okay. What are what are spirits or what are negative spirits but pests, right? So you're using this olive oil to kind of pre- prevent anything from coming into your home. And then the last thing I tell people to do for psychic reasons Get little mirrors from a local craft store and hang them above your doors and windows facing out. It reflects any of that negative attention coming towards your home. And finally, I know I said that was the last one, but the other ones are vinegar in bowls in the corners of your home is really good for warding. Smells a little bit, so it smells like a salad when you walk in your house, you know, (laughs) not always the most pleasant thing. Um, Or you can also do onions. Um, onions, which is, I know everybody makes fun of that one too. They're like, I don't want my house to smell like onions. <laughs> but do you know what an onion does? It absorbs everything that's around you. That's why you should yep. never cut an onion and put it back in your fridge. It's going to absorb all of the bacteria in your fridge. Like yep. it immediately does. Ew. Yeah. I do yeah. that all the time. Yeah. I'm going to stop doing that. Yeah. Don't no, do don't. It, you, it, I'm telling you, the dirtiest place in your house is not in your bathroom. It is that rubber ring around your fridge. It has more bacteria than any other place in your house, right? So you put that onion in there, that onion is absorbing all of that bacteria. The Black Plague was prevented in certain families because they used to keep onions by the bed, cut open. Oh, that's interesting. I've never heard that before. I've never heard that either. Yeah. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I learned that from a, a friend of mine, Lori Bruno, and I, I didn't believe it at first. I was like, you got to be kidding me. Onions by the bed. And then I looked it up, and historically, Sicilian midwives used to tell people to put onions by the bed to prevent the Black Plague. And a lot of people said this actually saved their family, it, you know, historically said that this actually mm-hmm. saved their family. So, yeah. Wow. Very cool. Fleas on rats. Exactly. And onions. And onions. <laughs> um, you had mentioned your coven. Yes. Can you, will you talk a little bit about that and... Sure. Yeah. Um, We take oaths to protect the tradition and to protect its members, so I can't talk about its members. Um, But our coven has been operating since 1998. It is a Gardnerian coven of the Long Island line of Gardnerian, which came to this country in 1963 from England by Raymond Buckland, a gentleman who is now deceased, who was initiated in the Isle of Man and worked for British Airways. He came here and, and started the first coven in this country of the Gardnerian tradition in Long Island in Comac, uh, Long Island, and our coven is descendant from that coven. Probably the largest tradition of witchcraft or of Gardnerian Wicca in this country comes from the Long Island Line coven. Um, We celebrate the 13 moons, the 13 full moons, which we call Esbets, and we celebrate the eight seasonal festivals or holidays called Sabbaths, and they are broken down into four major holidays, uh, which are the Celtic fire festivals uh, historically, and then the uh, solstices and uh, equinoxes. It's actually, very, it's a beautiful religion. We are more about celebrating life. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a lot of Eastern religions that are about getting off the wheel, uh, not wanting to be reincarnated, uh, reaching a nirvana place. Witches are very much so about celebrating life. We use very old folk traditions from Northern Europe mm-hmm. uh, to celebrate dancing the maypole. It's a phallic symbol. It's the time of fertility. We're dancing to bring fertility to our land and to our lives. Um, our upcoming Sabbath, our festival, is Lamas, which is on August 1st. It's the first harvest of the year. So we're celebrating bringing in those first crops that can be harvested and celebration of, of that. So it's very much so following the seasonal cycles. The lunar holidays, uh, Esbets, there are 13 full moons in the year. So we celebrate those full moons. And to us, the goddess is lunar. The moon is what controls tides and, and controls the menstrual cycle. So logically to us, it controls anything and, and is connected to the feminine aspect of nature. The sun, which fertilizes crops, is connected to the god in nature. And we celebrate them and we have very specific names which we only give to our, our other people in our family, within our group. It's almost like a tribal thing. And it is a priesthood. It, to be in a coven and to be in a tradition is a priesthood. It's a train. It's a training thing. We believe in a year and a day outer court training in our coven and in our line. We do an outer court training, which is a year and a day, to prep you and see if you are able to take on the act of initiation, which is a very tedious task. You have to learn a little bit about everything in this world, a little bit about biology, a little bit about history, etymology, mythology, history. I mean, it's, it's really a lifestyle more mm-hmm. than anything else. That's very interesting. That is. 
And I'm wondering too, within that, because you talk so much about like the moon and the sun and nature and everything, does astrology play a big part in it? Absolutely. We believe in the two luminaries, the sun and the moon, and then the five planets. And everything, the basis of most magic, spellcraft, that sort of thing, which everybody likes to say is just prayer. It's really not prayer. Prayer is is concentrating and focusing, but not really projecting. Witchcraft is about taking your power and taking the power that you can control and projecting it towards something to achieve an end. Astrology is huge within the the root of what magic is. Mm -hmm. Everything has a connection to one of the the seven planets or the five planets and the two luminaries. Um, The color red is the color of Mars. So the day of Mars is Tuesday, right? So on Tuesday, you should be wearing red as a symbol of Mars. It will help you be strong and protect you. I wear the colors of the of the week. Today, unfortunately, I'm not. And not that anybody can see me. And I could probably <laughs> make it up and be like, yeah, I'm wearing the color of the day. I'm not today. Um, but I do, on average, wear the color of the day. I think that it, it connects you to that planetary energy. What are the colors of each of the days? Perfect. So <laughs> Sunday is the day of the sun. And it's the color of gold or a really kind of goldish yellow. Okay. Okay. Monday is the day of the moon, moon day. Um, So silver or a real beautiful white. Tuesday is the day of Mars. So red. Wednesday. (laughs) Perfect. You pulled out your white scarf. I did. (laughs) Wednesday is the day of Mercury. It's the day of communication, orange or mixed colors. So anything that's mixed is, is really good for Mercury. Thursday is the day of Jupiter, which is my favorite day. A royal blue or a royal purple. Friday is the day of Venus. Venus is the day of uh, the color of green or pink, predominantly green. I'm going to go off on a side note on a little tangent for a moment. Most people think that we do money magic using green because it's the color of money. Money magic predates American greenbacks, right? Yes. It's because of fertility. The planet Venus is the goddess of love, Aphrodite, the planet of of fertility and abundance Mm -hmm. and luxury. So that's why we use green in spells for money magic or for luxury magic. The next day is Saturday, which is the day of Saturn. Saturn is the planet of lessons that need to be learned and lessons that need to be taught. There's a little bit of that. I don't celebrate Pluto or I don't work with Pluto. So some of the the correspondence of Pluto also fall into Saturn, which are all about timing. Mm. And that's the color of black. Interesting. Yeah. Is that why everybody wears a little black dress on Saturday nights? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, that's very smart. Mm -hmm. I didn't even put that together. That's very smart. Yeah. Cool. I'm wearing my beautiful white scarf, and I'm very in tune with the the planetary stuffs. Absolutely. It It will help increase your intuition. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. The the moon day is all, moon day, Monday is all about intuition. Um, Connecting to feminine power, too, is really Mm -hmm. a big, a big aspect of that. So, yeah. Yeah. Because I, and I'm such a novice when it comes to astrology, but I love it. We have five planets in retrograde. Is that right? Yeah. Everybody likes to harp on this retrograde thing. And I I will tell you, it's, it's become a, a fad to, talk about the negative aspects of retrograde, there are positive aspects there are to retrograde. There are a lot of very positive right? ones, yes. And um, in Vedic astrology, they actually view retrogrades as being a positive thing. The more retrogrades you have in your natal chart, the more advanced or the more lives you've lived, the older of a soul you are. And that's that's just my oppression from some of the people that practice Vedic astrology. I'm sure there's other interpretations. I'm not a Vedic astrologer. But there are positive things that come with Mercury retrograde as well. Is it a time of difficulty for some aspects? Yes, but you know what? When the planets aren't in retrograde, those planets also still have the same... The Mercury itself is going to talk about communication. It's going to talk about travel. It's going to talk about all of those things. It doesn't have to be a retrograde. You could have a square, a planetary square going on where it's not a good time to travel or it's not a good time to communicate. Are there some influences that are a little bit more deepened in retrogrades? Yeah, yeah, there are. But I wouldn't say that it's the worst time of the year. Everybody says, oh, Venus is retrograde. I'm never going to find love. Right there, you've just projected it and put it out into the world. Yeah. Why would you do that to yourself? I'm a firm believer that you have the power to control what you need to control in your life. And if you're going to blame everything and become the victim of it's retrograde, you're giving up and, and you're not you know, using your own power to kind of control that. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Like, I'm again, I'm such a novice with astrology, but I always kind of look at the retrogrades to kind of like put a positive spin on it is. And I know I, and I've joked with you during this Mercury one about like our communication stuff breaks or when my computer died and I was like, oh, Mercury's in retrograde. Um, but I, I also look at it as like it's it's like a great time to learn kind of lessons. Like Absolutely. things will flip back around and show you stuff. So like time to figure it out. Right. And and. and- Mercury, the reason it's retrograde is because from our position, it looks like the planet's going in the opposite direction Mm -hmm. than it normally would, right? So here's a time to really reflect on the things that have happened over that time period that 
Mercury is going back. So if it's really charted, right, and we say that it starts at zero degrees and it goes to 30 degrees, 